Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. friends I thought today before I start the mode shifts we we'll try to recapitulate what are you doing so far or what we have done so far if we try to recall we started with definition of dynamic stability We started with mass spring damper system, which is typically a second order system, and most of our analysis takes the help of understanding whatever we have through mass spring damper system, and there we try to understood what is natural frequency what is damping ratio. We also try to understand if I stretch it and release it, how this system is going to oscillate or behave depending upon whether it is over damped case, under damped case or critically damped case. After doing this, we made a step towards writing equations of motion for the airplane. for airplane or aircraft because here we know the equation was m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f of t which describes one dimensional motion of this mass once the disturbance is given. We try to develop equations of motion for aircraft then segregated one longitudinal case another lateral directional case and we were clear that longitudinal case when we were considering independent of having any influence on the lateral directional case we assume that the angle of attack, the trim angle of attack as well as the disturbances are small because you know if the angle of attack disturbance is large then this can cause a yawing moment as well because of two asymmetric vortices that generates. Also if I have the rates very high through the coupling, inertia coupling it can have effect on the lateral directional case. All those things we have assumed to be negligible or not present when we are dealing with longitudinal case. Then we discuss lateral directional motion and we know that if there is a bank or roll like this, like this, so the lift here will be more, so drag here will be more, so it will also yaw. So the lateral directional gets coupled, that is why we are developed formulation when you are talking about stability or special dynamic stability taking the lateral directional equations together. For longitudinal case we studied how u is changing, how alpha is changing, how theta is changing that is u alpha means indirectly I am talking about this motion where alpha is vertical by the horizontal speed and also pitching theta like this. So, if when I write alpha I also mean w the vertical component. So, there are uh, three variables where alpha and w are linked and for lateral directional case we talk about v small perturbation along v 
y-axis, then we have phi, we have psi. That is this, this, and this yaw. Right? But if you see in, the, in terms of equation of motion, we talked about v dot, we talked about p dot, we talked about r dot. Right? Your it. R is your it. Okay. After that, what we did, we developed perturbed equation of motion. And defined dynamic or defined dimensional dimensional stability derivatives we try to understand the sign and magnitude of each derivatives and we realize that these dimensional derivatives have dimensional like non dimensional derivatives then we also used stability axis system and we know that once i use stability axis system the value of w a component along z at steady state is zero that simplifies our equation and also helps because lift and drag are perpendicular to each other that helps in modeling if we choose stability axis system but same time we know the moment we use stability axis system then i must also try to find out what are i y y i z z or cross moment of inertia about the stability axis system and we have shown for 3 to 4 degrees angle of attack how much variation it can have so as a preliminary study one may even neglect it but there is no need to neglect it yes, it's just you have to apply one transformation you will get this number once we have done this then we found that if i take a longitudinal case We get equation of the form A S four plus B S cube plus C S square plus D S plus E equal to zero and A B C D E they have the expressions based on the stability derivatives, inertia properties. More important thing here is for most of the airplane we found this generates for longitudinal case two pair of two pairs of complex conjugate and one we identified as short period, another long period, this is also called fugoid, fugoid mode. So if I try to display the roots in imaginary and real coordinate system, we will find one root is here, one complex pair is here. So this is large negative, this belongs to short period and this pair belongs to fugoid. After knowing these roots, we know how to find once I know lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, which are complex conjugate, I know how to find out natural frequency, short period, zeta, short period. Similarly, omega n fugoid and zeta fugoid. Right? This is one part we have done. Second, we have gone to a lateral directional case. There also we got equation of this form A S four plus B S cube plus C S square plus D S plus E equal to zero. 
and interestingly once we solve this equation numerically for most of the airplane roots are typically like this one real root another real root this is real part is very less negative or sometimes marginally positive this is large negative another complex conjugate this is a complex conjugate which is in our term it is dutch roll mode this is roll mode highly damped and this is spiral mode and you know what is the spiral mode suppose the airplane is going like this and there is a bank as it bangs, it starts side slipping and it generates beta and CN beta is positive, so it turns like this. As it turns like this, the lift here increases, it again bangs, it turns. So, unless things are properly managed, natural tendency to go like this in a spiral mode. Roll, you understand, highly damped mode because of large wing, and Dutch roll is this motion this motion if you combine them together with slight roll which can neglect that becomes a Dutch roll mode. One motion like this, one like this. And we also know how to control their natural frequencies or damping ratio because as long as you know the roots, if it is a complex pair you know how to find natural frequency and damping ratio, if it is real you talk in terms of time to half or time to double right, the amplitude. Once you have done that you realize for a designer at the initial stage he does not have the whole configuration ready for him. So, if you ask him you start using this equation, this quartic equation it will be very difficult he does not have the numbers. So, he said let us do some approximation and then we need in longitudinal case we did some approximation short period approximation and forward approximation in short period of approximation he said part of du is 0 and for forward part of alpha is 0 we have been again and again telling forward approximation is not very correct approximation and from here we got the expression for omega n short period and zeta short period, omega n fugoid and zeta fugoid, and we said they are approximate expressions. And we could quickly see from here that it is the m alpha that primarily decides the omega n, and for this it is the m q that decides zeta as far as aerodynamic contribution is concerned it is C m alpha and C m q. For fugoid we have seen for a glider type without any engine and all this is it the short period goes inversely with C l by C d. So, if C l by C d is large fugoid damping is less right. After realizing this found let us further do some simplification and then we go went for a pure pitch case where we assume only one degree of freedom and that is the pitch only pitching is allowed no plunging right. And there we wrote equation like this i y y q dot equal to pitching moment which is half rho v square s c bar into C m and C m is function of alpha q delta in alpha dot. So, we wrote like this q dot equal to m alpha into alpha m q into q m alpha dot into alpha dot plus m delta e into delta e and we put an approximation that alpha equal to theta and theta dot equal to q this implies alpha double dot equal to q. 
This is typically when you are only pure pitching. The airplane when pitches in atmosphere, it not only does this because angle of attack is changing, so there will be a motion in vertical direction as well. But from here, we clearly found that m alpha, m q are the critical parameter which decides omega n and damping ratio. This was longitudinal case. Similar, one study was carried out on lecture we dedicated towards approximation, 1D approximation for roll as well as for Dutch roll. It was really not a Dutch roll. When I say 1D approximation, it is the yaw. It was wrong statement earlier that I gave. Dutch roll will have yaw as well as this motion, swaying motion will be there. But in yaw approximation one dimensional, you only assume it's only yaw is possible. And here you identified the parameter CLP or dimensional LP roll damping parameter which will decide the characteristic of bank buildup or rate buildup and yaw we identified C n beta or n beta and C n r or n r. So, this is the stiffness part non dimensional and dimensional this is the damping part non dimensional and dimensional. Okay. Once we have developed that background, now we made an attempt for understanding stability augmentation system and there we talk about SAS, we talk about how to increase omega n, let us say we are talking about longitudinal case short period, short period we have to increase omega n from the one dimensional analysis or from the approximation, approximation we did, we knew that omega n is proportional to under root of minus m alpha or so I have to tweak c m alpha, right. And what we did, we said this is the aircraft, I tap alpha and multiply with some gain and then deflect delta E is equal to k alpha and that way we enhance or we can change the value of C m alpha appropriately to get the omega n. For zeta, for zeta we said we will tap q again similar logic k and the delta E will be given as proportional to q. So, this will help us in enhancing or changing the value of zeta. Similar thing we did for lateral directional case, for lateral directional case we realize if I want to change the Dutch roll frequency of the airplane, it is directly proportional to n beta or C n beta. So, if I want to increase or change omega n Dutch roll, I have to change C n beta and for that logic was very simple. The aircraft you tap the beta, multiply it with k and give delta r equal to k beta. So, that will enhance the locally the value of C n beta or the indirectly natural frequency Dutch roll in the approximate sense, right. Then we wanted to increase zeta Dutch roll, the understanding is very clear, now you are expert, if this is the aircraft, I will tap R, I K and this will go delta R equal to K R, by giving this feed I can increase locally the value of CNR which means I am changing NR, hence I am changing 
the damping ratio for Dutch roll approximately. It is actually damp, damping ratio for yaw damp, like a yaw damper. But do you know approximately that has an influence on the Dutch roll frequency? Once we do this, we also understand we start from here for designing a stability augmentation system because we should be careful when I am changing omega n by giving alpha feedback. There are other parameters like C L delta E into delta E. This contribution also gets altered, it becomes C L delta E into K alpha. So, effectively, you could see that the C L alpha of the airplane is changing, right, for that time. So, there will be some effect, cross effects, which you need to be careful, and all those things you will put again back to final design to this equation and see where exactly are the roots. Right. This is one way to handle this, but why we are doing all this thing that is also here clear. We have spent one lecture on that, although I have been advising you should read and do a Google search to understand the specified handling quality requirements. And what is what is most interesting is the requirements are postulated using zeta omega n or zeta omega n together or time to half or time to double, right. So, whatever we have done by doing approximation or aim was to find out natural frequency, damping ratio, time to half, time to double they are all required finally, to meet the handling quality requirements. In handling quality requirements, we have seen that there are various stages, one is class, then category, what are the flight phases, classes, what is the basic type of airplane, category, what are the flight phases, handling qualities, what you want, level 1, level 2, level 3, for each class, for each category, to have a level 1 or level 2 or level 3 specified values of zeta short period, zeta fugoid or omega n fugoid or omega n uh, short period, they are specified. Either they have specified only zeta, sometime product of zeta and omega n. You will find why I am saying you doing go for a Google search is that new new requirements come as the technology gets upgraded. Similar things have been done for Dutch roll and spiral mode. What is important to note is that for spiral mode, generally this is marginally stable, right. So, mostly we talk in terms of time to double and must ensure that specification is stressing time to double should be large, so that the pilot has enough time to correct, ok. So, we have done all these things and we understand that we have done sufficient as a preliminary exposure for designing the fundamentals for dynamic stability and SAS together, right. If you go to a control man, he starts from here, then things become more rigorous, right. Before I conclude this summarization, please understand you need to give lot of weightage in understanding the sign of these derivatives, let us say if I say C m alpha, C m q, C m delta e, if I say C n beta, C n p, C n r, C n delta r like that, similarly C l p, C l beta, C l r, C l delta r or C l delta a it is extremely important you should revisit and check whether you clearly understand uh, what are the signs of these derivatives, because these derivatives will have a contribution all these derivatives will have a contribution because of fuselage, because of wing, because of tail, because of engine, 
because of landing gear, so many. Right? You will also notice that few of the derivatives will have huge contribution from a particular component. For example, CM alpha, the major component which will contribute will be the tail. Right? CLP major contributor will be the wing. So that as a designer you should clearly understand what are those components of the airplane who contributes to these derivatives. So that you can really design appropriately as an initial guess. Right? Suppose if you want to increase stability margin and you are going on increasing CMQ, right? then something is wrong because CMQ is the damping, contributes to a damping. So, if you are thinking in terms of increasing the damping ratio, we will focus on CMQ and see how CMQ can be increased. If you are talking about increasing stability margin, I look towards how to increase CM alpha and there you will find how tail volume ratio plays an important role. Okay? So, you just do not do mechanically whatever we have been discussing, spend some time when you look for CM alpha you see what are the components which decide CM alpha, how can I change CM alpha without altering much change in the whole airplane. Right. That is extremely important and my approach for doing all those things was to give you that insight. Do not lose the sight of all the physical components which are there in the airplane and you are trying to modeling their, model their effect by some sort of a aerodynamic modeling. But finally, you should know the final contributor is how good or how bad you have displayed those components. Right? So, please do not get lost into these equations or expressions. Focus your eyes on the airplane wing, see different types of wing, different types of aerofoil, different types of tail configuration. Sometimes it will be a T tail, sometimes it is a low uh, tail at the mid tail, maybe canard, there could be forward swept wing. So, all those things you ask yourself a question how they are going to affect the stability. Then only you will really get the juice of this fundamental understanding. Okay? I am sure you will do a good job. Thank you very much.